This is the pre-lab for biology 1441 for the microevolution lab. Microevolution is a change in genotype or allele frequencies over time. So we'll need to be able to define alleles. And in the examples we'll be using this week, we'll be using co-dominant alleles. So here's an example of how you'd write that out. C in this case stands for color. Let's say we're looking at cows and what color their fur is. So they all have the fur color gene. Now which alleles do they have? Well, in this case, we have a red allele and a white allele. All right. Now what we could do is look at a population and figure out the allele frequencies, which is look at how many red alleles there are in that cattle population, look at how many white alleles there are in that population, and then turn those into percentages. In this case, we have 60% red and 40% white. We can also look at genotype frequencies. It's going to be important for you to remember the difference between genotype uh, and, and allele, etc. in this lab. Genotype frequencies would allow you to look at how many cows have uh, the red-red, red-white, or white-white combinations of these alleles. So genotype is when you look at the diploid combination. So here we would have red cows. Here we would have red and white cows. This is because they are co-dominant genes, right? And here we have white cows. We could see what proportion red cows make, red and white cows make, and white cows make out of that population. So what would cause these frequencies to shift? Well, genetic drift, which is random fluctuations over time. Gene flow, which is when genes enter or leave a population thanks to things like migration. Non-random mating would cause a shift. Non-random mating is when organisms, let's say, only mate with those nearby, which might be closely related to them, or they only mate with organisms that have similar traits to them, things like that. That would be non-random mating. Natural selection is going to affect allele or genotype frequencies. That's when some organisms better are better able to survive and reproduce than others. Mutations will also affect these frequencies. That's when new alleles arise because of errors in meiosis, for example. Now, how do we put all this together to see if evolution is happening in a population? Well, we use the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which is shown up here. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. P is going to stand for the uh, percent or the, the frequency of one of the alleles, and Q will stand for the frequency of the other allele. Okay? So in this population, we have 22 red cows, 60 mottled cows, which are red and white, and 18 white cows. We now have to ask, well, is this population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? And what does that mean? What if it is in equilibrium? That tells you the population does not appear to be evolving, at least for this gene. Okay? So notice... I set this up so this should add up nicely to 100 cows, making, uh, making some of our math a little easier for us. So we can remember, we can easily now calculate the, what the current uh, genotype frequencies are. So remember, red cows would be uh, CR, CR, and they would be 22%, uh, right? 22% of the time, you'd have a red cow. Uh, modeled cows are CR, sorry for my handwriting, <laughs> CW, and white cows are CW, CW. So we'd see these 22% of the time, these 60% of the time in that population, and these 18% of the time. But we need to figure out allele frequencies. So let's say CR, we're going to assign to the variable P. So we'll write down P right here. And CW will assign to the variable Q. So we need to figure out what those are. Let's do that over here. All right, so we start off by looking at these 22 red cows. 
How many red alleles are there in 22 red cows? Well, these are diploid cows. Each red cow is CRCR. -CR. That means there's two of them. So we can take 22 and multiply that by 2. And so we know that in 22 red cows, there are 44 red alleles. Okay, This is where we'll do the, the red math up here. Okay, In 60 modeled cows, CRCW, there would be 60 red alleles. So 44 plus 60. In 18 white cows, there are no red alleles, so we don't have to worry about that. So that adds up to, I believe, 104 red alleles in this population. Now let's look at the modeled alleles, okay? Um, in 18 white cows, so white, white, 18 times 2 would be 36 white alleles. And in 60 modeled, there would be 60. And that will add up, I believe, to 96 white alleles. Now, let's sum those together. And we should have a total of 200 alleles for this color gene in the population. Now, to figure out proportions, we simply take 104 over 296 over 200. Uh, let me do that with a calculator. Uh, let's see, what was it? 104 divided by 200. That gives me 0 0.52. And if I've done my math right, that should make this 0 0.48 because added together, they will equal 1 or 100% of the alleles in that population. Now what I have is I know what the allele frequencies are for the population, for the current population. Now I can use the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which will tell me what the genotype frequencies should be if the population has not been affected by drift, flow, or any of those other variables that will shift a population out of equilibrium. So I enter these variables into the equation at the top here. So I would take 0.5. 5, 2, and I would square it, and I will add that to 2 times 0 0.52 times 0 0.48, and then I will add that to 0 0.48 squared, and that should equal 1. Now, let's do the math. Now what you're doing here is not solving the equation to get it to equal 1. You're simplifying the equation. So 0.52, oops, 0.52 squared is 0 0.2704. I'm just going to round that to uh, 0 0.27 plus 0 0.52 times 0.48 times 2 is 0.4992, which we will round to 0 0.5 plus 0.48 squared, which is 0 0.2304, which I will just say 0 0.23. What we have calculated is, or I should say are, the expected genotype frequencies if this population has not been affected by drift, flow, um, natural selection, etc. So we compare these proportions to the proportions that we had up here. And so, all right, CRCR is 0.22. Compare that, oops, compare that to this number, 0.22 is not equal to 0.27, right? 0.6 is what we had for the model organisms. Let's compare that to what we calculated. We calculated it should be at 0.5, and 0.18 is not equal to 0.23. So this is what we should have if the population were not evolving, but what we have seen is that the population has evolved for this gene. It is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Now, I recommend before you come to lab, maybe work through this problem again, but also check out page 491 in your textbook, 
And concept check 23.2 has some Hardy Weinberg questions in it that you could work out to ensure that you understand this before coming to lab. Make sure to bring your calculator and we'll see you then.